Hey guys, hopefully you can hear me over the wind, and I'm getting a little sunned out, so I'm going to be brief today. What I have for you here is my Savage 12FB in an Orcs chassis. The only differences you're going to see on this Orcs chassis right now is I've added a Picatinny portion at the very front with an Atlas bipod, and on top of that, uh, I put on a, I think this is a Fab, yeah, Fab Defense pistol grip. I just like this one a little better. I've had it on ARs, and surprisingly, I really like it on this particular setup. It's a very good pistol grip. I'll tell you right now, favorite. My favorite pistol grip I've used, but I'm going to compare that against MDT here in a couple months. So I'll tell you what I like about the rifle and the uh, the setup here with the chassis specifically. What I do like is that it's nice and long, that there's an extension here. It's a little bit longer than the forearm was, I think, on the, the original Savage flimsy stock that it comes with. So that allows me to get a better balance. Uh, if it went another two inches, you know, that'd be nice too, so that you can get the most stable platform, just spreading out your weight, dispersing it. But as it is, uh, it's very rigid and... I have zero, zero issues. I, I feel like this is good for dumb guys and people who are just getting into the sport, especially because you can drop your action, your barreled action, right into this chassis and you don't have to glass bed it and you don't have to do a lot to it. It torqued up really easy. Nothing was like wobbly or required a lot of extra attention to make it sit right. So I feel like this whole, this whole thing is just stupid proof. You really can't get it wrong. Um, the, the thing that I wish is that they would have maybe for the price sense with a Picatinny portion just would have been nice uh, you know it's it's a $400 chassis some people that's gonna be a big turnoff for me I understand that other chassis are gonna cost you a lot more so if you do a comparative analysis between this chassis and others from MDT there's a big price difference so what do you lose in that well maybe a little bit of uh, the options like there's no folding stock here it doesn't have a quick uh, adjustment feature for the length of pull or the or the face riser or the cheek riser I don't mind that at all. The cheek riser doesn't interfere with my bolt uh, too badly at all. I, I can even I can even clean it with my um, uh, uh, chamber guide, and so I don't have to take that off. But it's not hard to quickly adjust with an Allen. It really doesn't bother me at all. Um, the length of pull. So in the winter here, you know, sometimes like it's really cold out, guys. Right now it's nine degrees, which believe it or not is let's see, do the math quick. It's 45 degrees warmer than it was a few days ago. It's 9 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was 45 degrees colder a few days ago. So you're putting on lots of jackets, and then uh, today 9 degrees feels warm, and so you're taking off jackets. You know, I'm in the sun, and so you're getting a little bit different of a length of pull. It's just kind of nice if you're doing really, really uh, precise shooting to be able to go back and forth quickly with that. But, uh, you know, because it's going to change your eye relief and your, your length of pull on the trigger. It, it does change stuff, but I'm used to that because that's just Minnesota. That's like everything I have to deal with. Um, that's kind of why I like AARs, you know, adjustable buffers, so that I can go back and forth depending on how many coats I'm wearing, clothing, that kind of thing. But for me, uh, I'm going to tell you guys, this is worth the $400. I don't see anything about it that I don't like. I don't see anything about it that isn't worth the $400. I do think that's a lot of money, but for the performance that I'm getting, and, and it's just helped me with my consistency. I'm 6'5", I'm pretty tall. I get so sick of those European contour stocks that dip down low and it's hard to follow up on shots and it's just inconsistent and so I, I really hope that Savage and other companies stop producing those hunter style stocks because basically stuff like this is the future it is much more uh, easy and natural for just about every shooter to jump on this gun and quickly customize it to them and then you're good to go so for follow-up shots not that 223 is hard to follow up on but it just makes it easier to have a consistent recoil straight back you know that very uh, linear motion so the chassis itself is really nice for that on the bottom I, I guess I did put a barricade pad on here I kind of do that on every rifle it's nice and flat I like that I don't like rounded um, forearms just because when you're resting on things even on tank traps I prefer to have something flat on there so I put the barricade rest on there and this is really nice there's a little uh, stopper right here it's just enough for me I'll tell you the mags that it comes with these are polymer ACIS magazines and they're a little sticky especially when it's extremely cold I noticed that Okay, getting them in there. That wasn't too bad. Taking them out has smoothed up, but that's after hundreds of times. Okay, so if you first get it and you're like, oh gosh, it's way too tight. Yeah, it probably is. You're going to have to work on it a little bit because there's a little bit of a plastic tab on all of them. And it doesn't fit just, just perfectly, but if that really bothers you, switch and go to a metal magazine. Uh, other than that, I don't have any problems with anything. I like it. It seems to feed reliably, eject reliably. I'm not having a bunch of magazine tension issues. The only thing I'll say is the first round, when you put in 10 rounds in this magazine, the first round is usually pretty tight. That's standard and normal with lots of magazines. So a little bit tight and everything else after that loosens up. 
Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a few shots. It seems like the wind is dying off on me. Not too bad. I, I think I'll go ahead and throw, I'll throw a six down range real quick. Hopefully you can hear some impacts. Just shooting at a silhouette today with some really cheap plinking ammo because ammo shortages. So hang on just a second. I'm going to set up and then we'll, uh, we'll see how many hits I get. All right, so my data for this, uh, in this temperature right now with a 55 grain perfecta, believe it or not, haven't heard that name for a while. With this junk ammo, I'm at five mils for drop at 625 yards, and it seems to be pretty spot on. With the wind, I'm holding between one and a half and one mils for wind. And so that's, uh, it's kind of a big change. Uh, just depends on if I'm paying attention to the wind or not, but we'll throw a few down here and uh, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't miss too much. There's an impact. 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 All right, so that was not uh, not really hard at all, even with that junk ammo at 625 yards. And I'll just say the things that make it so much easier. Again, it's recoiling straight back. I have a nice firm connection with that Picatinny to the bipod, whereas before there's definitely flex and uh, you had to really know how much pressure you were putting into anything at any time. I shoot pretty loose. I let the recoil you know, flow uh, just straight back as much as I can. With those old stocks, they kind of go down, especially because I'm tall. Uh, the length of pole is great for me right now with what I'm wearing. And this little shelf right here, there's a little shelf on these for your thumbs so that you don't have to wrap around, you don't milk the grip. And uh, that shelf right there, man, it's going to be hard to go back to any kind of stock that doesn't have that from now on because it is just so useful at making sure that you don't, uh, you know, adversely um, affect your shot, pull it one way or another. So I'll just tell you guys, as a real amateur shooter, I really like it. It was worth the money. I have zero regrets. I think it made this rifle um, at least the $400 better and more useful. Not to mention going from a blind mag to having a 10 rounder that feeds reliably with many many rounds through it now uh, that really 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 makes me happy so great job to orcs mdt savage all those companies i think this is a very worthwhile product you can go ahead and pick them up they're still in stock right now you have i think od green and coyote or, or coyote uh tan rather so pretty cool i like it thanks guys go ahead and like share subscribe watch one of these videos if you are bored